All right, so my name is Erin Karpinen, and I am the co-research director at ICBC. Um, so my presentation today is going to highlight two projects from our 2020 research program, both of which are related to 4R nutrient management in spring wheat. So I'm going to discuss results from a project called Demonstrating Spring Wheat Phosphorus Fertilizer Response on a Severely Phosphorus Deficient Irrigated Field and Demonstrating 4R Nitrogen Management Principles for Spring Wheat. Uh, so the 4R nutrient stewardship is really a framework that's been established to achieve the overarching goals of enhancing the environmental, economic, and social outcomes associated with cropping systems. Um, so a few examples, or a few, a few specific examples of those goals include um, increasing the economics of production, uh, which can include in overall farm profitability as well as crop yield and quality. Uh, there's also enhancing environmental sustainability um, and that re that's related to reducing non-targeted losses uh, that can degrade air, soil and water. Another example is the implementation of best management practices to optimize fertilizer use efficiency. So to achieve these goals with our fertilizer applications, we're looking at applying fertilizer using the right source at the right rate, at the right time and in the right place. So the first project I want to discuss is the 4R phosphorus study that we established on the ICDC land rented from the town of Outlook that's just adjacent to the, to the federal CSIDC research station. And this project was funded by ADOPT and Fertilizer Canada. With a total of a whopping 2 ppm or about four pounds of phosphorus per acre in the zero to six inch soil profile. Uh, we got recommendations with the soil test and uh, that came back that we should apply an additional 43 pounds of P2O5 per acre. Phosphorus is an important uh, nutrient for early season crop growth and it's also required throughout the growing season. In Saskatchewan, uh, soil available phosphorus is very low and that's a result of our parent material, but also some cultural practices such as under fertilization. With the consistent under fertilization, we create this overall phosphorus deficit in the soil when the inputs from fertilizer are less than the phosphorus exported in the grain. So due to the inability of phosphorus to move in the soil, the uh, current best management practice is to seed place phosphorus near the developing root. However, this may not always be possible depending on someone's specific on-farm logistics or if the amount of phosphorus you need to seed place exceeds the recommended safe rate. For cereals, that's about 50 pounds per acre, but it's certainly lower for oil seeds and pulses. Uh, so this slide is just showing the 11 treatments that were used in this trial. Uh, all treatments received side-banded urea at a rate of 120 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare. Um, and then the, the phosphorus applications varied. So we used the same source, the monoammonium phosphate, um, and then varied the rate from 0, 20, 40, and 60 kilograms of P2O5 per hectare. Uh, and that was either applied in the fall or the spring as a side band or seed placed application. And this picture I wanted to share, it really shows the strong uh, visual differences in vegetative growth, growth that we saw with this, this trial. In these plots, the phosphorus was seed placed and you can clearly see as fertilizer rate increases from 0p to 60p, um, that there's also that corresponding increase in the early season biomass. And there's a couple other things to note is we didn't see those classic phosphorus deficiency sy symptoms in the 0p plot, but we also didn't see any evidence of fertilizer damage in the 60p plot, which actually slightly exceeded the recommended safe rate of seed place phosphorus for cereals. Uh, the graph here shows the yield response to the rate, time, and place of phosphorus fertilizer. So on the x-axis, I have a uh, rate in kilograms of P2O5 per hectare, and um, on the y-axis is uh, yield in bushels per acre. Uh, the colored bars are red as a fall side banded application, blue is a spring side banded application, and green is a spring seed placed application. 
Uh, so there's a few things I wanted to highlight about the gra this graph. The first is that it was really the rate that drove yield differences, not the timing or the placement of nitrogen fertilizer. So if you look specifically at, say, the 20 kilograms um, application rate, you can see that within that application rate, there's really no difference between the fall side band, spring side band, and spring seed place. And um, that's really shown with the overlapping error bars. And that um, observation really held true with all of the other application rates. Uh, the next thing I wanted to highlight was that yield increased as phosphorus fertilizer rate increased. Um, so initially from 0 to 20, the 0 to 20 application rate, we saw an average yield increase of about 78%. And then a substantially smaller increase, but it was still significant from the 20p to the 40p application rate and then 11% uh, increase from the 40p rate to the 60p rate. And the last thing I wanted to note was if you can see the yellow arrow here, it's that um, I'm just bringing you back to the original soil test recommendation, and that was here at about 50 kilograms of P2O5 per hectare. Uh, just a quick note on protein and maturity. Uh, as yield increased, we saw that the protein content decreased, and this can occur when you're increasing nutrients such as phosphorus without a corresponding increase in nitrogen. Overall, any plots that received a phosphorus application matured one to, do, one to two days earlier than the zero phosphorus uh, treatment, um, but that, you know, that span of one to two days is likely uh, not enough to cause problems with anyone's harvest management decisions. And just a brief summary of this, um, this trial, uh, that again, rate was the most fa important factor driving yield, and there was really no effect of um, timing or placement in this particular study. Uh, we had the highest yield at 60 kilograms of P2O5 per, per uh, hectare. And um, in hindsight, you know, Gary and I were talking uh, we probably should have had an additional 80 kilograms of P2O5 per hectare and then so that we could determine if a further yield response could have occurred. And the last thing, the greatest benefit occurred from the first increment of 20 kilograms of phosphorus per hectare. So if you already have 15 to 20 pounds of phosphorus in your soil, there still will be additional benefits of adding phosphorus fertilizer. It just will not be as substantial as, um, as what we're seeing here in our severely deficient soil. Uh, the next study that I want to discuss is our 4R nitrogen study. And that was also funded by Adopt and Fertilizer Canada. And it was also established on that same parcel of ground that ICDC rents from the Town of Outlook. So in the fall of 2019, we collected a soil sample from the trial area. And again, so that came back with a total of seven pounds per, of nitrogen per acre from zero to 24 inches. And also with a recommendation that we should apply an additional 142 pounds of nitrogen per acre. With nitrogen fertilizer, losses mainly occur through ammonia volatilization and nitrate leaching and denitrification. So right now, the best management practice is to sideband granular nitrogen at seeding, but of course that might not be possible based on people's individual um, on-farm on logistics. So this trial was actually two separate trials that were managed as one cohesive project. The first trial looked at the right rate. So urea was sidebanded at seeding at rates ranging from 0x to 1.7x. Uh, we established the 1x rate at 150 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare, and that was a slightly lower than the soil test recommendation, but um, still within the realm of that. Uh, the second trial looked at the right source, time, and place of nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, so the sources varied from urea, just the conventional urea, and three enhanced efficiency fertilizer products. The first being ESN, that's a polymer-coated urea that provides a source of slow-release nitrogen. 
uh, agrotain, which is a urea treated with a volatilization inhibitor, and uh, super U, which is also a, a treated urea, but it has a volatilization inhibitor as well as a nitrification inhibitor. Uh, so these were all applied at the 1x rate of 150 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare and um, applied in either the fall or the spring as a broadcast or a sideband application. So this graph shows the fertilizer response curve to the, the varying rates of nitrogen fertilizer. I have rate here. Um, right here on the x-axis and yield in bushel, bushels per acre on the y-axis. Uh, so with this graph, we saw yield increasing with increasing fertilizer rate up to 0.75x. Uh, then there was no difference uh, between 0.75x to the 1, 1.5x application rate. So there was no benefit, no yield benefit to with increasing fertilizer additions after that point. Uh, then actually we saw, ended up seeing a yield decrease at 1.75x, which uh, is likely due to fertilizer toxicity at that rate. So if you can see this yellow arrow, uh, that I just wanted to again bring you back to the soil test recommendation and um, show you that it was just slightly above the 1x rate. Um, and just make a note too that last year so this um one x the optimal rate can change from year to year and actually last year instead of 0.75 x the optimum rate we found was around for yield was around the one x rate this graph here demonstrates the yield results for the different end sources that were applied at the one x rate uh, so here i have source on the x-axis and yield in bushels per acre on the y-axis uh, so compared to urea, we saw a five bushel per acre per acre yield increase with the polymer coated urea, but no yield no yield advantages to adding the treated urea products, agrotain or super U. And in this graph, I'm just wanted to demonstrate the yield results for the timing and placement of the nitrogen fertilizer applications, um, also at that one x rate. So I have timing and placement on the x-axis and yield in bushels per acre on the y-axis. Uh, the fall broadcast is highlighted in orange and then the two spring, spring applications are in blue. So the main thing to note from this graph is that the spring applications yielded higher than the fall applications. And um, there was no difference between the nitrogen that was applied as a broadcast or as a sideband in the spring. And just a quick summary on this project, again, the optimal rate that we uh, came up with for the nitrogen fertilizer was 113 kilograms of N per hectare, and that was that 0.75x rate. Uh, so we saw about an 8% yield increase with ESN over the conventional urea. Uh, the spring applications yielded higher than the fall applications. And although we didn't directly measure that, uh, we can assume that we that these um, yield advantages are due to reduced end losses. That we established this summer, uh, but the 2020 annual report will have a complete summary of all projects undertaken by ICDC this year. Uh, this should be available in February or March of 2021 on ICDC's website. Uh, so with that, I just want to thank you for your time and attention.